So how much wireless radiation does it take to make humans ill? This is one of the big questions which we are still uh, sorting out the answers for. <clears throat> Next slide, please. When we're in a room, for example, here is a living room. There's a television set on and that's putting out light waves which are received by the eyes. But there are also lots of other waves. And all of these uh, electromagnetic waves make up uh, the phenomenon we call electrosmog. And uh, that is the totality of the, um, the radiation around us at any point. All of the waves have the, the ability to interact with biology and they'll all interact uh, in different ways. They've got Wi-Fi, you've got FM radio, you've got AM radio, and they all interact in different ways. So how do we measure the radiation? Well, typically we spend a few tens of thousands of dollars and buy a machine like you see on the left of the, on the next slide, please. You got it. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so buy a machine like you see on the left. The problem is these meters, although they're used by uh, engineers traditionally, they're very, uh, they're not really very useful when you're measuring 4G or 5G uh, signals because these are very short pulsed signals and the human body responds very quickly. Um, there's nine zeros on that. It's 10 to the minus nine seconds is the time in which a molecule in the human body will uh, complete uh, a combination process. Um, so the human body re responds much more quickly to the pulsed radiation than a meter does. In fact, most meters are designed to only measure average only measure the average power rather than the peak power. Yet, of course, it's the peak power that upsets the uh, combination of proteins in the human body. The second problem is that meters are far less sensitive than human biology. They're wideband meters, and for reasons of Boltzmann noise, which I can't go into, they just can't receive signals or they can't detect signals that affect human biology because human beings act more like radio receivers than they do wideband meters like this because of the phenomenon of resonance. Next slide, please. So if we look at this slide, it's rather busy, but uh, I'll point you over the left-hand axis first. The uh, y-axis on the left-hand side shows the power density at which a test is being conducted from 10,000 down to some really small value with lots of zeros in it. And that's the first thing I want to point out. We're talking about a huge range of uh, intensities here, 10 to the 12th, 12 zeros of range uh, here between the high level signals that come from a cell tower and the uh, low level signals that of the human body itself and uh, from um, uh, satellites from space and, and low level sources. So most of the tests have been conducted above this level there marked as a bio-initiative bio unsafe level. Bio-initiative was a study which was uh, done in uh, 2012 which pulled together a whole lot of data some of it's here on this graph, to try and figure out what is an unsafe level. And that level around, my, uh, around there, 0 0.003 microwatts per meter squared, was selected as being a good point. And you can see, in fact, that all of the studies marked on this graph uh, are at levels above that. The uh, lowest one there, the red mark for sleep disorders, weakness, fatigue, pain, uh, and then we have the next block is uh, decreased cell growth and then childhood le leukemia. But I want to point out on the blue block there, the third blue block up the graph from the left is one mile from a cell tower. That's the intensity you get at one mile from a cell tower. So you can see that there are all these studies that have shown effects in human beings and human cell lines that are equivalent to the signals one mile from a cell tower. And yet we're talking about a 5G build out where you're only going to be uh, a few yards from a cell tower, uh, 50 feet if you're lucky from a cell tower. So we've got a problem there. And then below the unsafe level, there's just that one data point that's uh, outlined at the bottom there in red, which is alteration of the electroencephalogram, the EEG or the brain waves of uh, people, uh, of humans, um, by very, very low intensity microwaves. There's very little studies in, in the middle because 
the immune dysfunction, the chronic disease uh, causation, the immune dysfunction, is very hard to measure. It takes a long time. The immune uh, function of individuals varies day by day and week by week, not hour by hour and minute by minute. But we've been doing studies in that area and we find sensitivity right through uh, from that lowest EEG uh, report up to the um, reports that are towards the top half of the graph. The so next slide, please. The wireless industry tells us that 5G is very low for power and therefore very safe. Is that true? Well, a 5G antenna is very small. You can see one in the left-hand image there being held by a hand. They're really quite small, the receiving antenna and a sending antenna on that circuit board. But there are actually 128 tiny antennas on each of those patches of gold there on that circuit board. These 5G antennas are very small. Um, they consist of hundreds of tiny antennas and they focus the energy like a flashlight into a beam. So if you look at the flashlight on the right hand side of this image, you can see how the beams are focused from the flashlight. In the middle, I show how the tiny, uh, how phasing the, uh, these tiny 128 or more tiny antennas uh, causes a big beam in that green direction, just like the flashlight concentrates the signal into a beam. Now, the power from the transmitter itself may only be 6 watts, like a cell phone, but the energy and the focus of the beam is 1,000 watts just like in the energy in the focus of a, a, a LED a flashlight with a tiny LED uh, creating the, the light. Next slide, please. This is the only one here. Power is only one factor in safety. Industry considers heating a power, like a light bulb in watts, and yet the body's molecules operate at much, much smaller levels, 50 milli electron volts. And scientists know from their experiments that humans and cells are affected by very low levels of 4G and 5G energy. And yet the mechanisms to explain that are complex and hard for engineers and regulators to understand. Yet, uh, as Cindy said, chronic disease is epidemic levels. 42% of US adults have more than one chronic disease and our medical system is creaking. And now our kids are getting ill. Used to be mum will kiss it better, but now the kids are getting ill too. Why? This is one factor. And the final graph shows that as you go closer to a cell tower, uh, you get more and more illness being reported. Uh, and at the uh, uh, distances we're looking at, under 100 yards, 300 feet from a cell tower, there are a great number of illnesses, from fatigue and headache to movement difficulties, dizziness, skin problems, that have been shown to be associated with uh, the cell towers.